And today we have a particular focus on mateship and older men with four representatives of four great organisations uh, who are working with older men in different ways across Australia. I'd like to start today by acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands where we meet from. I'm joining you today from the lands of the, the Baili, the Bundabunda, the Grang Grang and the Grang Mob up here in central Queensland. So welcome to the uh, latest session of Men's Health Connected. It's been a really um, busy week talking to lots of great uh, projects uh, working with men and I've been really looking forward to this session. Uh, I'm going to crack on really quickly because we've got a packed schedule with uh, four speakers. Uh, we've got uh, Kevin joining us later from Circle of Men in Queensland. We've got Rebecca from Men Sheds in WA. We've got Anthony from Tomnet, the older men's network in uh, Toowoomba. Uh, but first, I'm going to hand the reins over to Frank Cowell, who is the uh, one of the lead guys at Shed Happens in McKay, or Mackay. I still don't know how to say it, so I'm going to say both so I don't offend anyone. Frank, over to you. Thanks, uh, Glenn. I'll get straight into it then. Um, I'll get into the share screen. And uh, I've got a, a quick PowerPoint that I'll run through. Uh, share. Okay. We can see your screen, Frank. Come on. Give it away. How did you ever wake up in the morning on the wrong side of the bed? A bit confused and yawning, you go straight out the back to your shed. Yeah, all Australian boys need a shed A place where he can go Somewhere to clear his head Think about the things this woman said Yeah, all Australian boys need a shed Join on and learn to be right on Work on what I've got on Grow up as he likes Grow anything under life Place to keep his tools, nuts and bolts and drills, to hang a hide, to hide the dry, to hang, pay the bills. Well, my old shed, she leaks a bit, the roof is caving in. Nothing that a bloke can't fix with a few spare sheets of tin. The beams are old, telegraph poles, white ants have eaten out. She creaks and sways on windy days and we towards the south. At the back of the shed where the dogs are fed near last year's bales of loosened sticky. That talks about all Australian blokes need a shed and we focus on the fact that a lot of us are like that shed that John Williamson is uh, explaining. Broken down a bit leaning a bit to one side, uh, have had various issues in our lives. And um, so our three taglines for SHED are the three on the screen you can see there. Um, and so we provide, encourage, or we encourage men to be their very best. And in the way we do that is through their stories. We provide a non-judgmental, non malignant safe place where other boys can learn through the stories, the life stories of other men. And also pursue a personal connection with other blokes. I've seen blokes being interviewed at Shed and in the audience, in the group blokes are nodding their head because they've either been there and done that or uh, they're in the process of going through it. And the challenges that blokes face. We face a lot of challenges as we all know. This, these two promos probably are a good example um, of uh, what we what Shed's all about so let's get up here and play this one for you Shed Happens is a non-threatening safe environment for blokes to share their stories, the good, the bad the happy and the sad I found a real comradeship 
among the men. All of the men that come here, they're all great fellas and they're good to talk to. And it just gives them an opportunity to you know, connect with other blokes with uh, similar stories and whatever level that may be. I would really recommend any man from the age of 14 upwards to come to Shed. Shed happens. Quality time with other blokes from around Mackay. 6.30 the third Wednesday of every month. Working on hearts, not projects. Shed is an opportunity for us to meet as men and discuss all the experiences that we go through and gives us an opportunity to share how we sorted those problems out. Every bloke has their story. It's amazing to hear what, what their side of their story is and what knowledge you can get. Understanding each other and helping each other. They've gone through so much and seeing that I've gone through so little, I can learn from them and what they've experienced. Shed happens. Quality time with other blokes from around the So our format that we do, we have a monthly meeting on the third Wednesday of every month. And the general format is like this. We have a bloke-sized barbecue dinner. We have a big roll. You put shove as much meat and uh, salad in as you can. And away you go with that. We ask for a $10 donation. And we have free soft drinks as well. We welcome new blokes and make sure the new blokes are welcome. We, we clap the new blokes, we get them to identify themselves and we give them a small gift pack of promotional products. We give out information on men's issues, so stuff that Glenn puts out from uh, the Health Forum, uh, all other issues that are, that are topical, uh, we'll bring up issues. A lot of it comes from um, the uh, focus on the family, um, dads for kids, that's the sort of information we pass out. We interview usually two blokes and we talk about the personal side of life, not the career. We can go through a whole shed happens uh, night without um, knowing what the bloke did for a job. Um, because we don't focus on that, we focus on the relationship, husband, wife, children, father, mother, uh, mentors growing up, all that sort of thing. Then we have a session we call thumbs up, thumbs down. And this is to get the new blokes talking to somebody. So we get them to talk to one other bloke about the best thing that's happened to them in the last month and um, something they've struggled with possibly in the last month as well. We have other formats. We do have a, uh, we interview a subject matter expert on a topical social uh, subject and then break the blokes up into groups of about six or seven and have that led by a uh, uh, group leader uh, for a group discussion. So far we've covered uh, family and domestic violence, pornography, and um, um, relationships. And the other format we have, we sometimes have a guest speaker. Uh, if there's someone in town, we had Brad Huddleston from America talking about digital um, addiction uh, last about two months ago. Other projects we're involved, we, we routinely visit Every Wednesday, the men's shelter here in Mackay. Have two blokes going there to encourage those blokes. There's not a lot of um, uh, encouragement in there for those fellows, most of them at the bottom of their, their um, swing. We're fortunate to be sponsored by one of our local engineering companies. Uh, we're in the mining area, so we've got a fair bit of money kicking around. Um, we do a thing called Pancakes and Play in the Park, which is a family fun day. Uh, where we get the blokes to get involved with their families and we have a partnership that with Neighbourhood Watch and we also uh, um, promote International Men's Day. We've currently got an art show happening uh, to promote International Men's Day along the theme of uh, health and wellbeing for men of all generations. Uh, and then we have a Mackay Man of the Year that we award at the breakfast and we have the breakfast as close to the day as we possibly can a corporate breakfast where we raise a bit of money and give that to other charities. Um, this is a story of a typical bloke we've got from Shed. Uh, this fella was um, run over by a car on his push bike when he was about 14. That left him with a brain injury where he's only um, 14 years of age in his head. He came to Shed, he stole from us, stole our takings one night. Um, I collared him and because he was seen doing it, Followed him and said to him, you've got two choices. You can either not come back or you can come along and ask for forgiveness from the blokes and repay the money, which he did. And that was about five years ago. 
and he's now a very valued member of um, of the uh, the team. Uh, so that was a that was a case where we could have thrown him out, but we decided to give him an op an opportunity, and he grasped it with both hands. And that's the PowerPoint. So no bloke ever went backwards with encouragement. Real blokes being real and working on hearts, not projects. The reason we have that working on hearts, not projects, is to delineate us from the men's shed organisation. Men should do a great job in the way they do it, but we do it differently. And so we need to divorce ourselves a bit from that. So that's my presentation. Brilliant threat. Frank, you manage your time wonderfully. Thank you. Uh, if anyone's got a question, pop up a hand or any comments or use the, the chat box. Um, I'm just going to ask um, while people are thinking about anything they want to sort of say or ask, Frank, could you just give us a flavour of um, you know, shed happens uh, uh, in terms of its sort of national national reach. Yeah, we have uh, we had about fifty sheds operating around Australia at its peak uh, when COVID hit. A lot of the sheds that were being led by one bloke have folded because they couldn't meet. It was very difficult, particularly with older blokes. As far as Zoom, we went to a few Zoom meetings and found that we lost probably about fifty percent of our uh, our group, uh, but we've built that up. We're now up to, we're getting re regularly between 40 and 50 blokes to every meeting. Great. And I've, uh, I've posted a link in the chat box there to the broader Shed Happens uh, website with all the different active national groups uh, listed. Yeah. Um, anyone anyone on the, uh, on the Zoom got any um, questions or observations? Yeah, Rebecca. Hi, morning, Frank. Um, morning, I was Barry. thinking about uh, Bill's story and what a turning point that that would have been and what it could have been if you didn't uh, give him those, uh, give him that second chance. I think yeah. if uh, he may, to that point, not have had uh, many or any adults who would have really given him the 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 time and the respect. And, um, yeah, that was a, to have a, a, a group say, actually, you are worthy of a second chance would have huge turning point for him yeah, thank you yeah no we we thought that was the best uh the best mm -hmm. course of action but he is still 14 years of age in his, in his mind uh so he really was a bit of a kid uh, even though he's about 45 years of age yeah it um it, it immediately brought to mind th thanks rebecca uh you, you know you, for, hi for highlighting that that story and in a way you're also highlighting um the way that uh groups like ours do um do, do prevention in in, in unusual ways because we'll never know what impact it would have had on that young man's life uh negatively if he had been excluded from the group but i it just immediately reminded me i was in canberra last week and i got told a very tragic story i won't go into gory details but basically a fella was um kicked out of a of, of a local sports club which was his only point of social connection it was it was his it was his it was it was, it was, it was his lifeline and he, he he took his life right by the his own life right by the club because the kicking out from the club was the final straw for him so we're talking today about you know social connection and social inclusion uh, uh and and the sort of the many positive effects that can have but it's important to remember the most tragic end social exclusion can lead to uh to, to those uh one of those suicides we know we have uh every day in australia so um so so good work that was potentially suicide prevention but maybe longer term who knows what path that young lad would have gone on if you'd uh if you turned against him uh anthony yeah, um i just want to ask frank so you um uh, you do all ages for guys yeah we do uh anthony we um we we're trying to get men and their sons. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be our best demographic. Would be blokes and their sons. Yeah. Um, we've got a couple of those. Um, younger men. We're getting a few more of those, but we've got really the whole spectrum from about fifteen upwards. Mm -hmm. Predominantly you... older blokes. So I've got to say. Yeah. Okay. Do you get um, guys that are or young men who are, I guess. Um, not in contact with their fathers? Do they, do they, do you get guys that don't come along with their dads or? Yeah, we get a few, um, you know, right across the spectrum. Yeah. Um, we get blokes who are, you know, haven't spoken to their father for years. Yeah. Um, other blokes who 
fathers who their sons haven't spoken for years. It's a matter of trying to get them to work through the issues they've got through the, the interview process yeah. and um, try and bring out, we always finish on a positive, always encourage a bloke because we're all about encouragement. Um, as you saw, you know, no bloke went backwards with encouragement. So we try and encourage them to make connection, whatever. Um, we're, we're basically a, a uh, led by Christian leaders, but we're not a religious organisation in any shape, manner or form. We have people from all over. Everybody's welcome. Gotcha. Frank, I'm going to have to bring you to a close there, but please continue the conversation in the chat box or offline if you want to hear, hear more about the great work that uh, Frank and the Shed Happens movement are, are doing. Um, Rebecca, I'm going to ask if I can bump you up to second place now because we've got some, as you will have heard from that conversation, we have some issues with Anthony's sound. Anthony, we're going to see if we can sort your sound out in, in the... Uh, in, in the background while uh while while we shift to Rebecca. Is that okay, Rebecca? Yep, no trouble at all. Okay. Thank you so um, much. So we're going to move now to uh Rebecca from Men's Sheds uh, WA uh to tell us about the work of uh the, the sheds and the the mainstream shed movement, let's say if that's how we're going to compare it to Shed Happen. And if you can give me some steps on how to share my screen because sure. I'm uh I'm a bit of a new when it comes to Zoom. Right. So the at the at the bottom of the uh your zoom box there should be a, a toolbar and in the middle there's one that says share screen yep. and um, then a window should pop up giving you some options so all windows ah uh, yeah okay and if you click on the powerpoint if it's what you're sharing option yeah okay yes okay and then if you just want to enlarge that using the uh the little television on the stand kidding? sign at the bottom. How's that? Yeah, perfect. Beautiful. Okay. Thank all, you. All yours. Okay, <clears throat> so thank you for having me here for this session. Good morning, everyone. Um, yes, it is a very early start over here in WA, um, but my coffee is strong. I am the Regional Health Coordinator for Men's Sheds Association of WA. My background is as an occupational therapist, and I've been working with the sheds for the past 18 months. WA has roughly 180 men's sheds and around 7,000 shedders, and there are more than 1,000 men's sheds across Australia. Mateship and camaraderie, they're the reason that we are all here, as we know that they are the highest ranking factors for a long and healthy life. Sheds provide men the opportunity to engage in meaningful, productive activities, to create and maintain friendships, to learn new skills, and to give back to their community. Some blokes transition into retirement very smoothly. Uh, they're looking forward to it. They have a network of friends. They have family around them and hobbies and their plans, and they sail through quite smoothly. But for many others, however, they don't maintain their social connections with their previous work colleagues. And unless they have pre-existing social groups, can find themselves a bit bored and a bit lonely. There can also be a loss of role identity. And during our work life, we derive a lot of meaning from our work identity and our self-definition. I am an occupational therapist, which gives us a real sense of purpose. Being part of a men's shed can help blokes move from I am a farmer or I am an accountant to I am a shedder, which gives them that feeling back of having somewhere to belong and that sense of purpose. Sheds across Australia feature a wide variety of hobbies with lots of activity actually taking place outside of the wood and metal workshops. As friendships form and grow, many sheds develop social activity groups such as golfing, cycling and camping groups. Shedders will transport other shedders to appointments when they cannot drive and many country sheds will hire the council minibus and take members into regional centres for some shopping. So as the WA peak body, what are we doing at the Men's Sheds Association of WA to help our sheds and our shedders? We have a shed wellbeing and health officer program and the men's sheds WA encourage all sheds to have a named welfare officer or wellbeing officer and it's my role to create a support network between these blokes. Yes we agree that we'll be, <laughs> wheelbarrow, wellbeing is everyone's role in the shed, everyone looks after each other but particularly in the larger sheds it's easy for blokes to fall through the gaps. So the wellbeing officers become the notices 
They review the books each month to find the members who haven't been attending as often as usual, and they put a phone call in to check on them. Two members who are usually mates, but who don't seem to be talking as much, the wellbeing officer will have a quiet word to check in on them both. We provide training workshops for the wellbeing and health officers to help them with their role by arming them with the skills for listening and for knowing when someone needs to be linked with some more formal support. We've also created a new health campaign, health promotion campaign this year under the theory of social prescription. Mm -hmm. Social prescribing enables primary health providers to address wider social determinants of health by referring patients whose health is affected by non-medical factors, such as social isolation and loneliness, to community services and supports. We've created new videos, flyers and posters Saying, well, we can't, it's all fuzzed out, but building mateship and supporting health is the catchphrase. And we have provided packs to each shed to distribute to their local health professionals. And the next one's a video, and I'm hoping I was as clever as Frank to get it working. Uh, we can't hear the sound, Rebecca. Okay. okay. Not sure how to make that work. But yeah, I'll take to... guys working with Anthony, so I can't help you, I'm yeah. afraid. Okay. If you help me out, um, Rebecca. If okay. you go out of your PowerPoint yep. and go back to the share screen, down at yep. the bottom there's uh, two boxes, one about the video and one about um, the audio. You click both those boxes and then bring it back, bring your PowerPoint back onto the screen. Okay, so go out of your PowerPoint first. Okay, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. Exit PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Or we'll stop sharing, actually. Yeah, stop sharing. Okay. Yeah. All okay. Right. So yeah. And restart then... the process. Um, share screen. Share screen again. Share screen. Okay. Uh, okay. Um... And now over to Frank. <laughs> yeah. Now. Um, no, don't. Yeah, go back. Don't. 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 When you after share screen, don't click on PowerPoint just straight away. Oh, okay. So, All right. Stop sharing sure. again. Yeah. Share so screen. Share. Yeah. Now, oh, what share you sound? See, Rebecca is down the bottom left. Should have two boxes. One that says about audio, one that says about video. Click in both those boxes, then bring your PowerPoint up. Okay. Uh, this one. Thanks, Frank. Men's Shed is a, a place where men can go to meet with other men, to be involved in, in projects and work on things that they want to work on and learn some new skills. Well, one of the The key outcomes I think they uh, they get out of being in a men's shed is they come to realise that some of the issues, health issues and just life issues that they're going through, it's, it's not just them. Sheds really are a powerful tool in combating social isolation and loneliness in men. I had a, a very bad stage of depression, saw the right people and reached a stage where they said, um, have you got a men's shed up your way? I said, I believe we have. And she said, join the bloody thing. Right, walk through the door, what do I have to do to join a man's shed? We're safety souls, two arms, two legs, and a bit of a brain. From there, I've done all right. The benefit of activity and purpose and routine cannot be understated. I mean, men ignore their health until usually it's too late, but when they're talking with other men, they realise that there are things that can be done, and sometimes that might be the spark that the man needs to go, oh, maybe that is something I can do something about. Men shed. Okay, did that work? Do I have you back now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I thought I would share a quick shed story. Uh, in February of uh, 2021, the uh, Wuraloo Gijiganap bushfire caused widespread damage throughout the area. In the months following the fire, the local bushfire recovery team found that the women seemed to be coping a bit better than the men. It was observed that the women were attending the community recovery events which allowed them to debrief about their experiences, but the men, however, were not. After a few months, the idea was raised and the Gijiganup shed was created to help the local community recover. The shed is primarily, primarily focused on mental health, forming friendships and drawing people out of their homes and into a vibrant center. They pride themselves on being more than just a wood or metal workshop. They have built a much broader community hub. They run a milling program, harvesting jarrah slabs from fallen trees on local properties, 
with the intention of making the slabs into dining tables and giving them to the members of the bushfire affected community. And back in October, the Gigi Shed was honoured to receive the 2022 Community Category Award in the Resilient Australia Awards. When I started my role and I began visiting sheds, not a visit would go by where there wasn't someone who would say to me, if it wasn't for the shed, that bloke would be in strife, or if it wasn't for the shed, I wouldn't be here. 18 months into my role and I'm still hearing it and it still gives me chills. A shedder down in Bunbury, Dave, told me of the first day he arrived at the shed. No appointment, just lobbed up on the doorstep. Fred spotted him, invited him in, noticed that he looked a little edgy, so put the kettle on. They ended up chatting for two hours straight. Dave told me that he was undergoing chemo at the time, could barely muster the energy to get around with his walker, and that he had a suicide plan lined up for that evening, and the shed was his last hope. How lucky it was that Fred put that kettle on. That was three years ago, and Dave is now the Secretary of the Shed. Thank you again for having me here to talk about men's sheds. They are magical places where blokes can sink their teeth into their hobbies and activities, where they can escape their wives, where they can share a laugh, make fun of each other, tell inflated stories, and feel a sense of connectedness and belonging. A safe and productive environment with an atmosphere of old-fashioned mateship. Thank you, Rebecca. You've, um, you've, you've just really got me in the feels with uh, that story at the end there. And it yeah. certainly reflects um, my own personal experience of uh, attending sheds around the country. And I often share in the suicide prevention space that uh, sheds are a suicide prevention project. It's not all they do, but exactly because I've had so, I've met so many men in sheds mm -hmm. who will side look to me and say, if it wasn't for these old buggers, I wouldn't be here. Yeah, um, and that's that's the Every health time. by that's the health by stealth that sheds do. A, a quick <laughs> shout around the room. If anyone's got a question, put a hand up. But I just want to uh, ask something. It's really impressed with the work that you're doing in terms of building the capacity of sheds to do health more consciously, um, mm -hmm. like building the wellbeing officer. Because one of the one of the tensions between the sheds and the health sector has always been that we've known for a long time that men sheds are health projects. But the health system has often looked at it and thought, right, well, we need to go in and start telling the blokes how to take care of the health. That's that that that's what makes it a health project. Whereas that just doesn't work, right? It's because they're not there to be lectured about their health. Yet you're yeah. doing something which is actually seems to be building on that health by stealth capacity. Could you just talk to us a little bit around that, the social prescription yeah. piece and and balancing the tension between the shed just being a shed and it also consciously doing well-being? Yeah, so the uh, my position was funded by the Federal Health Department and there's now a regional coordinator in every state um, and and exactly that, it, it, it's, it's health by stealth and it's recognising that um, there are messages that we can take into sheds, um, but, but at the same time, yeah, I, whenever I visit a shed um, or if we have a training session, I always say, I'm not here to tell you to eat your leafy greens and go for a walk and, and quit, quit drinking. That's not the point, you know. The point is to uh, help the the sheds really recognise what they're already doing for each other's health, um, physical health, but and and but mental health particularly, and and just support them in in whichever way is uh, is helpful and meaningful to them so I'll have a call from a shed saying um it was last week we have got a got a, a bloke here who's just been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease um we don't know enough about it to help him um you know up, over the next few years can we get a guest speaker out to fill us in so that we know what we need to do to support him or um we've had we've got a, a sheddy here who's a long long time shedder and really important person in the shed starting to show signs of um some cognitive change and his wife has just told me he's been diagnosed with alzheimer's and we, <clears throat> we don't know how to support you know and and so so it's 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 linking them and uh that's so we sort of spend time with individual sheds and, and then we've, we run kind of zone meetings as well um, but the wellbeing and health officer network is um, having that that person that can be that contact point. So when so if I'm reaching in or if they're reaching out, it's a contact point for that, uh, and and just um, arming them, yeah, with this listening shed. It's been designed for for the for the shedders um, 
by a gentle nubby here. So yeah, the how to how to listen and how to how to support without feeling like you've got to fix it, know all the answers. Right, uh, and presumably that's a voluntary role in each shed. So how how are you going? Um, have you managed to get coverage in all 180 sheds, or is it an ongoing process identifying people? And uh, so up until a few weeks ago, uh, we were at 55 percent of actually having a named person. Um, there were sheds, I mean, there's where, sheds where there are only seven people in them. So, um, you know, the president is the secretary, is the, you know, et cetera. Um, uh, we've just finished a round of regional meetings where my colleague and I actually travelled three and a half thousand kilometres around all the different regions and spoke about this as well as lots of other things. And um, I know, and after that, we, we've had sort of people put their hands up and say, oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, that doesn't sound like it's, you know, that much hard work or so that that number would have been bumped over this last few weeks, thankfully. But yeah, so we'll be pushing up to kind of 60, 65% of named people. So Great we'll work. Uh, yeah, I, and my ears picked up as well on that proactive approach you're taking to social prescribing because just more mm. broadly across the men's sector, mm. we're seeing lots of great grassroots groups which would really fit into that social prescribing model, but they're not mm. necessarily um, known by the local uh, known or appreciated by the local health system and so that that mm. act of actively going out and putting yourself on on the health system's radar as a as a, as a tool for social prescriptions a really nice uh, really nice touch as well yeah and we got cover letters printed one for um, residential villages and one for health professionals so uh, the um, the shedders can take take the posters and the flyers and the pack and 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 it's sort of does the talking for them so um yeah hopefully we'll the, the message out there particularly to the the health professional network right any questions or uh, comments or observations from the room gonna do awkward silence and see if someone wants to fill it <laughs> i will put my contact details up in the the chat i did notice that um question earlier Thank you. I, I just uh, also then want to really acknowledge uh, Frank, who 24 hours ago wasn't sure how to do the whole audio visual thing. Yeah, and, thanks, Frank. <laughs> and got got on a call with uh, got on a call with Robin, who passed on those skills, and he's now passed on those skills to Rebecca. It's uh, this is uh, this is the power of community in action, sharing <laughs> sharing knowledge. Only took a couple of hours. <laughs> yes, there you go. Well, you've passed it on in two minutes, Frank. It's the process is speeding up. Wonderful. Um, so just want to check, uh, have we got a uh, reasonable sound for Anthony now? Uh, possibly. We might just do a quick check, Anthony. I'm okay. going to have to mute your um, telephone. And if... Am I unmuted? Can anyone hear me? Quite, yeah. low, quite low volume. Yeah, quite low vo volume. How's that? That's... Better than what we had before. Before, probably not great. Better than great, um, I do. Anthony, but... I do apologise. My, I um, my headset. I must have knocked it off the cradle before I went to work, before I went home yesterday, and uh, I come in this morning and it didn't work. It was uh, the battery was flat. So, um, yeah. Hence, I'm on the phone now. Yeah. So, if you can just try and limit the movement around the head, around the around the phone, and and watch your fingers on the actual mouthpiece. Um, uh, the I'm sorry to do this to you, but the still you the stiller you are, the clearer it will be. But that's definitely yeah. good enough for us, and we'll really bear with you, Anthony. So I'm going to uh, go to uh, Anthony Hegarty now of um, Hegarty now from Tomnet, which is the older men's network in Toowoomba. Over to you, Anthony. Thank you. So I'll try, and I am a bit of a mover, so I'll I will have to really try and keep my head still. Uh, so I do apologise. Um, so I'll just uh, share my screen here as well. You can all see my screen there? Yep. Yep, okay, cool. Um, so uh, I'll have to be really really quick. I'll have to keep um, my time to a minimum. So I'll go fairly quickly through this. I've got a little bit of stuff here. Um, basically, just to tell you a little bit about Tomnet, for those who don't know, uh, we're a non-for-profit organisation. We're here in Toowoomba on the Darling Downs. Um, we've been in operation for about 22 years, uh, or just over 22 years. Uh, and basically, we uh, support uh, men uh, 50 plus, 
um, and we you know we try to help them with uh, their well-being uh, and finding meaning and purpose in in retirement. So as I said, we've been around about 22 years. We've got about 270 members here. Um, we've got about half a dozen affiliate groups out west as well uh, who work fairly autonomously um, and um, and do a good job of it. So we we try to help men find meaning and purpose and, and have some sort of uh, or, or add value to um, uh, achieving some things in retirement. And today I really want to talk about the social interactions that our guys have and, and some of the impacts or things that affect um, that um, social interaction. Uh, and then the programs that we, um, we do, uh, that our members are involved in, uh, which, um, uh, which gives them benefits uh, around that social interaction. Just a little bit about me, uh, just quickly. Uh, so I'm, I'm a counsellor. Uh, I've been with TomNet 10 years now. Um, I manage a few different programs. I look after the volunteering side of TomNet. Um, I run a retired blokes program uh, where we sit down and we talk to fellas about meaning and purpose and, and what can they do in, um, in retirement to, um, uh, to add value. Um, we also do a lot of information and referral services as well. So we have guest speakers. Uh, and we provide lots of information around my age care and, and other uh, information uh, that guys are after. So I just want to quickly talk about, and I won't spend a lot of time on this, um, what affects men um, being able or able to be social. Um, it's all well and good that we're, we've got our health and there's nothing wrong with us. We can go out and, and involve ourselves in, in lots of different activities. But when start, things start to, um, uh, we start to have issues, um, you know, that can really affect how, how well we can um, go out and meet people and, and do those things which other people are doing quite easily. And some of those things I've listed there, you know, financial reasons, you know, both our health, physical and mental, when that starts to decline. You know, our change in social network, you know, we might, um, you know, our families might move away uh, or our friends move away or, or we move away to, to another place. So those changes there. You know, loss of co-worker interactions. You know, we're not seeing the people that we just potentially spent 10 years, 20 years with. You know, we have mobility issues. Uh, that really affects, you know, how social we can be. You know, the effort of, of going to, you know, get in the car and drive somewhere and go, go to places uh, can, be, can be really tough for some guys and, and women as well. You know, the death of a loved one uh, it certainly affects the, uh, how social we can be. Our hearing, you know, we have guys all the time tell us that, you know, when they're in a group and, you know, they've got their hearing aids in and the, the sounds just echo around the place and, and that makes it quite hard for them. And some of them decide, well, uh, why would I bother then? You know, they don't then wear their hearing aids or they just don't go out and, and interact. And that last one there, you know, lack of obligation to leave the house each day. You know, when we were working, we were kind of obligated, well, we were obligated to, um, to go to work each day. And, um, and we don't get, we don't have that in retirement. So we've got to find ways to, um, to uh, get out of the house. So in terms of Tom then, um, you know, what do we do to help men maintain their social connections? As I said earlier, we, we offer a whole range of opportunities to engage with other people. You know, our motto is older men supporting other older men. So probably 70% or 80% of the things that we do uh, is about supporting other older men. So we do lots of things in groups. Uh, not everything is in a group, but most of it is in a group. So for instance, some of the examples, and this is not all that we do, but this is um, you know, within the time frame I've got. Um, I, these are probably the more ones that we do most of. So our guys have weekly and monthly meetings. You know, we have guest speakers at those monthly meetings. Uh, we do barbecues at those meetings as well. Um, we have a barbecue service. And the idea of the barbecue service is that we have a whole, we have about 20 or 30 guys in our barbecue team, and they go around to do events. They cook at different events, and we have businesses that um, that we go and cook for. And and part of the idea is not just to have a service. It's about our guys going out to the community to show that older men, 50 plus, had, still have something to offer even though they're retired. Um, and the barbecue service proves that. So we get lots of comments from different businesses about how friendly the fellows are um, and, and they love having the fellows there because we, we interact or they interact with the people at, at, the, um, at the service, the barbecue service. One of our really important um, activities and opportunities that we do um, is age care visiting. Um, a couple of pictures there of, of the fellows visiting some of the age care facilities. Um, our guys just, you know, they go and 
talk to fellows who are lonely, isolated in aged care facilities. Um, you know, most of the, we've got something like 40 odd aged care facilities here in Toowoomba. And you walk in there and most of the guys that are in them are lonely. They're isolated. They can't leave their, their rooms because of health reasons or other, other, other issues. Um, and our guys, you know, provide that social interaction for those fellows. So not only are our guys going as groups with each other, learning and, and, and hopefully becoming friends with each other, they're also going out and talking to other fellows. We all also offer phone support. So our guys, our volunteers, uh, call up our other members um, or sometimes um, just guys in the community that we have um, consent from um, to talk to them. Again, just for social interaction. The next program there, our intergenerational programs, which are some uh, uh, new programs that we've just become involved in uh, in the last couple of months, which I'm really excited about. And I'm, in the next slide, I'll go into a little bit more detail about them. And then community events as well. So again, we, we send our guys out, or well, we ask them first, uh, to, to attend community events instead of us as, in, as the employees. So these our members are the face of the organisation. So it's important for us to, to have them um, out in the community and interacting with other organisations and other business people uh, and the leaders in the community. And they're just, as I said, they're just some of the, the services or the opportunities that, that we um, provide. I just wanted to spend a, a, a little bit of time on the, these intergenerational programs because um, out of these programs, we've um, uh, I, I've listed on the next page um, the benefits that our members have um, uh, told us they get from being a part of these programs, not just these intergenerational programs, but the other other programs that we run. But we're really excited about these because we've just seen such huge there's huge potential with them, and and just the from the couple of months that we've been doing are some of these, the feedback we're getting from our members and also from uh, the businesses that we go to has just been astounding. So the, the Flexi School program, we've actually been doing that program for about 15 years. Um, so the year 11 and 12 students as, who are part of the Flexi School program, they don't fit into normal mainstream schooling. So, you know, they, they might not have their parents, uh, they may not live at home, uh, they might have got kicked out of school, they might have been bullied, they might have mental health problems, uh, or probably most of them do. Uh, and what our mentors do is they go in, our uh, volunteers, and um, they basically create friendships with these year 11 and 12 students. And over the period of a year or two years that they've been mentoring them, so they, they've really built up a great relationship. And that then um, you know, has benefits for everyone there. A daycare centre, so we've just started and the picture that's there is a couple of our members, our volunteers on their first day uh, visiting a daycare centre. So what, what we do is we go in and um, we have interactive play with um, you know, kids that are two to four year old in a daycare setting. And you know, just quickly, the, the feedback that we've received from uh, the daycare centre in terms of having men, and I do have, Minetta is there, uh, we do have women that are part of this program as well. But just the benefits of having men in a daycare centre um, interactively playing for, from an educational basis has just been absolutely fantastic. Uh, the difference in the kids, just even after a couple of sessions, uh, is just amazing. Um, I actually am involved in that as well. Um, I go down two, day, two hours a week uh, and I play with, uh, interactively play with these two to three-year-olds and the, and the benefits are just immense. Um, we also do a multicultural reading program. So with one of our senior schools here, uh, we have volunteers go in and they help these um, students in year 11 and 12 uh, learn English. Uh, these kids have a year or, or year one or two um, uh, skill in English. So they, they know very, very little English, uh, but they want to learn. So our volunteers go in and they assist them with reading. Um, and we're also starting up a primary school reading program as well. So we'll have volunteers, men, older men, going into primary schools and helping these kids um, and the, again, the benefits having men in those positions, older men, as in a grandfather role, uh, are just, uh, I could talk all day about them. So just some of the benefits, as I mentioned earlier, our members tell us about the benefits they get from being part of these programs, and not only the intergenerational programs, but also just the meetings and, and the volunteering and the barbecue service. And I've just listed some of them there, and this is, this is not all of them, um, but you know, they're learning new things. You know, they're feeling better about themselves and being happier. 
they have a reason to get out of bed. You know, again, it's that obligation to get out of the house. They feel like they're making a difference in the world. I mean, that's just fantastic. You know, they're making new friends. They're teaching others what they know, which is really important, I think, for this generation. You know, that they they know so many things, and and um, you know, they're able to teach others that stuff which they probably will never know. They're having fun. I mean, what more could you want? You know, and they feel like they're a part of something. Um, so they're just some of the, they're just some of the benefits there um, that our members have told us about being social and being out in the community uh, with our with the programs that we're offering. And the last slide, I'm just slightly over time. Um, in terms of TomNet, we're all about increasing that sense of purpose. It's finding that sense of purpose and meaning in retirement, um, no matter what our situation. So regardless of whether we've got mobility issues or other issues, uh, let's find a way that we can help that man find some purpose and find a, a reason to, to keep on living and to, to keep you know, meeting other people and, and trying to you know, get through this thing we call retirement. So yeah, so our programs, they give that opportunity to give back to the community and just about all of the stuff that we do. And that's me. Thank you, Anthony, and brilliant job of staying still and making the phone work for us. If uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you can you can you can you can have a little bit of a move for a second while I chat, right. and then but then then if you can return to to stillness uh, once we get some questions, um, I just want to. There's so much there that's really important. Uh, oh, thanks, Frank. Oh, you just need. That is a great ringtone you've got there, Frank. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get you muted. Yes, perfect. So, um, yeah, I mean, loads of great detail. Lots of stuff I've heard before from, from you, and always good to hear it again. I hadn't um, heard about the, the, the care piece. Uh, I know it's not the primary sort of focus here, but I just want to flag that up. So almost so I, re I remember it, because there's, there's this big conversation uh, in, uh, in other spaces about about the lack, the the shortage of men in 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 care, and and how that can be addressed. And one of the things I always say, obviously, having more, you know, having more men working in care um, w w makes a difference. But that takes can take a generation to shift. Yeah. But actually, male volunteers in care is something you can do in a, in, in a really short period of time, or doing things like getting more dads into schools and stuff. So seeing that getting. And we know that only two or three percent of early uh, early years um, workers, so those who are working with two to four year olds, only three, two to three percent are men. So that whole thing of, yeah. of, 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 of enabling the older men to volunteer, I think that's sort of a great example of a, of a win win initiative that it must do. It must be great and rewarding for the men, but it's great for the children, too. And it's great for the, the, the just that bigger conversation around around men, women and care. It's um, look uh, as I said in the piece, I'm I'm actually volunteering. I volunteer at a daycare too at to at the at the daycare that's in the photo there. Uh, I do two hours a week down there um, with um, two to three year olds, uh, and then we've got um, four other volunteers who are um, doing. Uh, they're in the three to four year um, sort of age group in that group, and um, you know we actually hear. Well, I, I've heard while I've been in the room. The, the staff walking down the hallway talking about the difference of having uh, a man in in the room with these kids the the way the the kids their behavior changes um, their attention span um, I went into the the three to four year old age group room um, and you know I, I normally do a reading bit of a reading program with them and you know they they ran over to me and said oh can you read us a book can you read us a book these kids sat there for an hour and didn't talk while I read these stories. And the staff are standing around going, what is going on here? These kids don't do this. So, and, and I mean, I'm, I, I like to think I'm a younger guy, but, um, but we've also heard about, you know, how our older volunteers, and we're only talking, they're only 15 years older than me, the difference that it is with having the guys in the room. Um, it, it really is valuable. And I tell you, it's, so there's so much you get out of it, and it's an and it's a really easy thing to get into. Um, you know, daycare centres they they want it. Um, you know, once you've got your blue cards and you've gone through the checks and everything, the daycare centres are looking for it because they are predominantly women. 
Um, and that's not anyone's fault. It's just that's the way it is. Um, but it is so rewarding. You know, I go away with a smile on my face. I'm happy for the rest of the week because I know that tomorrow, 10 o'clock, I'm going to be down there with those little kids and, and helping, you know, educate them, I guess, in a way. Um, but it's not only the little kids as well. I mean, we talked about, and please tell me if I'm taking up too much time, but the multicultural program that we've got, you know, these, these kids are in year 11 and 12. They have, they have no English skills. And these kids want to be in the program. You know, kids, kids are getting bashed in this, you know, from the media about how worthless they are and they don't want to work and they don't want to do this and they're all stealing cars. We've got, there's 100 kids up at this school that we go to. They all want to learn English. They all want to get a job. They all want to go out and, and um, get their license. So these kids are in it to win it. And our, our volunteers, we've got about eight or nine volunteers going to this, to this school and they're just sitting with these kids, building a relationship with them while these kids learn how, how to read. The, the benefits to guys and, and women as well are just enormous. And it really gives that sense of purpose. It's, you know, and you can still do other stuff. I mean, it's only for an hour or two a week. But yeah. you know, it, it, it's the benefits. It's those long-term benefits of yeah. you're giving back to the community and, you, and it's Great. So, yeah, so I wanted to pull out those a couple of themes there. One is the importance of for older men of having that sense of purpose, however that's provided. Uh, I also more broadly in terms of social connection want to highlight that we haven't really touched on the role of volunteering and men in volunteering as a route to, to, to building social connection for men of all ages and backgrounds and something we need to explore further so thanks for those points we've got a couple of uh, hands up i'm going to come to bill who put his actual hand up first and i'll come to frank who's put his virtual hand up so bill t- over to you thank you glenn uh quick two quick questions one uh i saw on one of your banners on the side of one of your tents to download the retired blokes book don't tell me anything about it i just love to have the link put in the chat for that but the interesting thing is you've got such a great program there, and maybe I've misheard you, but you only cover Toowoomba. Are you expanding it out to the rest of the state or even Australia? Because it is a great program. Uh, Omni's trying to do very something very similar, but uh, we're not as old as you. What's your expansion plans? Um, uh, it's tough. There's, there's two of us here. Uh, so Shannon is, um, is the general manager here, and there's me. Um, so in terms of, I guess it's a, when I look at the big picture, I mean, we're funded by the primary health network and the state government to, to run certain programs. And that money is to be used for those programs um, for us to roll out nationally. Um, you know, I know they sound like excuses, but it's, it's a time issue. It's a money issue. Um, we, we have the information um, I guess, you know, if we're going to admit it, it's how do we do it? We, we, may, we just don't know how to do it, uh, mixed in with all the other stuff that we're doing. So we kind of concentrated on, well, what do we do really well? Okay, we do this area really well. Uh, let's, just, let, let's just do that um, and, um, and look. And we are looking all the time to of how, we can, um, how we can roll it out. But, it, but saying that as well, there's, there's other organizations like Omni and, and the Shed Happens and you know, Circle of Men. There's other organizations that are doing very, very similar stuff. Um, we would probably um, want to, I guess, join forces with them as opposed to, well, let's create another Tomnet. You know, why do we need to? Maybe there's, a, there's another service which is already doing the same thing. How can we all work together to benefit men in the community? Um, so, whether that answers your question, Bill, I don't know. Right. And I'll put the link to the retired blokes book in the in the chat. Yeah. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks, Bill. Uh, Frank, to you. Yeah, Anthony. Um, I love you on what you're doing, mate. I've, I've been trying to do mentoring to young blokes uh, for about ten years with very limited success because I'm trying to do it on my own. Um, the, you mentioned just about answered my question, but you mentioned there were hundred kids in year 11, 12, uh, in the school you're at. Are you in the other other schools in Toowoomba as well? No, we've only just started, um, we've only just started with this program. So it's a, it's a, 
uh, what's it called, uh, English and Learning Development Program that's run through the Centenary Heights State School here in Toowoomba. Um, the reason we got involved in that one was because the Flexi School where we do the mentoring is an adjunct of Centenary Heights. And we just happened to be in the same room as the as Kiralee, who's the lady who, the, the teacher who runs the, the ELD, ELD program. And um, we just, we just started talking to her and one, link, one thing led to another and she said she needed more volunteers. We had a look at the program, thought, yep, that's a great, wow, fantastic program. And so we just farmed out for volunteers. So that's really how, how that program. I'm not sure whether other schools in Toowoomba run the same program. Um, the Centenary Heights is a state school. It's quite possible Harristown. I think they have a, a quite a, a large multicultural um, uh, student population. Um, the Centenary Heights, have got, they've got something like 300 um, multicultural students, um, but only, they've only got 100 places for this um, EALD program. So, um, okay. so yeah, so we're, yeah. Right, good question. Okay. Um, really well handled, Anthony. We could talk for much longer with all our speakers, oh, but uh, time is against us, as uh, as is so often the case. So thank you. Um, thank you. Go and find thank out you. more about TomNet. And I, I agree with with Frank. It would be fantastic to have a, a, a TomNet in every, every every town in the in the country. But no pressure on you to try and do it. You're already doing enough. Yeah. Um, it would also be fantastic to have a circle of men in every town in the country. And yeah. uh, so we're going to find out a little bit more about uh, what Circle of Men does uh, and why we think it's such a great project. Over to Kevin James from Circle of Men. Thank you, Glenn. And just let me know, anybody, or stick your hand up if my voice is clear. Am I good? Yep. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, before I start, thank you for the opportunity. And I was just reading in the chat about deafness uh, and hearing aids. And I once heard somebody say that uh, blindness takes you away from places, but loss of hearing takes you away from people. And that was very profound. And I believe it's true. But more about Circle of Men. We've been around and one shape or another since about 2005 and started in the Redland City area with one nursing home. And currently we have about 40 to 50 older guys who are volunteers ranging from the age of 59 up until our oldest volunteer who's 92. And we visit about uh, 12 or 13 nursing homes in the Redland City area and a couple over on my side of town on the south side of Brisbane. But our program is meant to provide companionship to elderly men specifically in nursing homes and I've just heard Tom Nett or Anthony talk about his visitations to nursing homes in Toowoomba uh, we're down here and that's the problem with expansion it's very hard to expand because our volunteers are based in Brisbane and Redlands and there's only two of us who are internet compliant so it's very difficult to build the uh, circle from a um, management level but uh, we like what we do in the local area and the purpose is to make the fellas that we visit feel validated and purpose we've all heard that but our main goal of course is what everybody else is trying to do we're trying to prevent social isolation and loneliness in fact, I was very interested or disturbed in some ways because there was a recent article I read, uh, Australian Bureau of Statistics were examining the highest suicide rate. And I was very surprised as I thought it might have been the younger generation, but proportionately, not volume wise, but proportionately the highest percentage of suicide completion is in the over 85s, which I found very surprising. And another thing, just as context, uh, in the area where our volunteers go into aged care facilities, and I didn't know this until I became a volunteer six or seven years ago, is that there's usually, sometimes not, but often the percentage is 10% men, 90% women. And I had to think about that. And the reason is because the average age of men in Australia, I believe, is 81 is 85. 
and the average age of a nursing home resident is 84 or 85. So there's not that many men there. And I was quite surprised when I first started to learn that there's 100 people where I go and there's usually nine or 10 men. We have more now, but they tend to be more incapacitated or bedridden or wheelchair uh, bound. So one of the things we like to do to get back to our program is to come in for 90 minutes. Now, because these men are institutionalized, we have to try and work with the management. So my main liaison point is with the diversional therapist. And we usually go in for lunch, uh, before lunch, 90 minutes, say uh, 10 a.m. to 11.30. And then we'll have another kind of afternoon session at other places, dependent upon our volunteers, usually from around 1 p.m. after lunch to 2.30. So we try and engage the men in conversation. We will try and talk about whatever topic they want to do. And if anybody knows a little bit about the circle concept, I'm sure you all do. It's used in many men's groups, young and old. I have a talking stick, which I hand around to the men. We sit in a circle or around a table and I encourage each man to say his piece. So at the beginning of the meeting, I say to them, the meeting is now open. I want to know who you are. Tell us your name. Tell us how long you've been here and how are you feeling today? That's what I want to know. I want to know what's happening today, right now for these men. And they might say, haven't seen anybody since you last week. Oh, my son came last week or haven't seen anybody. Everybody's overseas. I've got nobody. So we try and encourage whatever discussion happens in the body of the meeting. There's no set program in the middle. We might talk about loss. I've just lost my driver's license. I've just lost my wife. I've just lost my daughter or son or children, which is a terrible thing. So we'll talk about whatever bubbles up during that opening. The uh, facilitator will listen and we'll draw upon whatever we can during that meeting. And we try and end on a positive note or do a little bit of singing. We have some song books and they love singing. As we all know, the guys with dementia uh, often don't communicate verbally very well, but they will sing and they report the staff often with better behavior in some of these people afterwards. It's a sense of belonging, and we've all talked about purpose here today, and this gives the men some purpose. And I have to tell you, it's pleasing to me every Wednesday afternoon when I visit my local facility, all the men come galloping out and they, lo they love uh, sitting down and they're ready waiting for me. You don't have to prompt them. The purpose for me, basically, is not to talk. My purpose is to allow them to talk, listen carefully, draw them out and see what the topic is during the day. And uh, it's rewarding work, but it can be difficult for male volunteers because a lot of these issues are very pressing for us in our uh, middle age, I'll say. So uh, you, you need volunteers who have an empathetic uh, ear who can sort of listen in carefully and find out what the real issue is, because I'd like to know what's bugging these guys and try and address it so that when I'm not there, this is the real purpose, when I'm not there, I want them to talk to each other when I'm not there and form their own groups. And to give you a, a good news story, oh, I just got a thought there. Uh, I think it was Rebecca who said, health by stealth. I'm going to steal that. I like that very much. And uh, what I'm trying to do is encourage these guys to look after each other when I'm not there. Because in the past, there'd be a guy sitting next door to them in another room, 10 metres away, and they wouldn't talk to him because they didn't know who he was. I want them to do that. And I'll give you an example where one of our fellows who's blind, he's a very intelligent man. He can recite poetry and stories and everything off by heart, but he is blind. And another guy will come in and read for him him of our group because he's bored and he wants to read for the other fellow and they look after each other and they're now a pair so that's great we want them to, to develop new networks that's the whole purpose for us in building these new networks and the guys will come out and be uh, engaged in the conversation and look forward to it as i do um I don't want to talk too long. Just someone put up a red flag and tell me to shut up. But uh, I'll leave a few minutes for questions, obviously. But uh, yeah, we've got, as I said, a dozen places. We have a Facebook page, which I'll pop in the chat. And we also have a website, which we're currently updating. But essentially, what we want to hear is a conversation. We want companionship. And overall, that means we're getting connection because connection 
is what is the big issue I feel in these guys who are 85. They feel there's no purpose left in life. And if we can give them that connection, I'm all for it. So, uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity and I'll, I'll stop now. Great. Thanks so much, uh, Kevin. It's been great to observe over the last few years how uh, how you've been developing. And, and I don't know if you're able to share, but when we last had an interaction you were saying there were some plans for to, to create a few more groups are you able to share that yes uh, i will thanks glenn yeah well as i say we've been around for 18 odd years but it's the demographic that we would like volunteers from that's difficult to achieve because we can only meet these guys are institutionalized we can only meet from monday to friday it's all about staffing it's all about money the institutions cannot have us there on weekends or evenings I throw back 90% of the volunteer inquiries I get because they're full-time working guys who want to come and see them after 6 p.m., who want to see them on their Saturday off. And I say, sorry, pal, we can't. Most of our volunteers, I'd love to get guys from the age of 18 to 65, but most of our guys are in my age group and up to 90. So that's the big issue. And recently I've joined their uh, Bolton Clark uh, is the largest establishment in oh. Australia now. They're the ex-RSL care. They've bought out a couple of other places and they're now the largest provider. And they have a great model in most of their places where there's an independent living area, what they call residential care. And they also often will have the uh, res residential aged care or the in-house care, the hostel, where the guys are more disabled. What we're trying to do with Bolton Clark nationally, and this is a five-year plan we only discussed on the 3rd of April with the uh, uh, management and CEO in Melbourne, we want to engage them to start setting up more circle of men in their independent areas with a view to these independent guys who are there now for the rest of their life and probably transition into aged care. We want them to start doing their independent groups under our banner with training from us. And that's what we're doing at the moment. We've started up two or will shortly start up two trial sessions uh, with help from management from top down. Because what I've found, it's very difficult at the grassroots level, as we all are, to build relationships from grassroots staff level up. So we're trying to get it from top down with all the training facilitators to embrace this uh, circle of men uh, idea, whatever they call it. So I'm very excited that this is going to take place immediately, but in a small scale and a five-year plan for the future. Great. Thank you uh, so much, Kevin, for the great work you're doing. It just feels, you know, it's one of those things that should be part of the culture of the, those those aged care settings but it, it's not and unless someone actually makes it money yeah, sure uh yeah. and I, i'm reflecting on uh older male members in my own family who I've, I've i've observed myself being that that typical um bloke isolated in a room within a care setting where the food is fine the physical care is fine the provision of um of daily medicines is fine but the there is no there is no social interaction uh and then we shrug our shoulders and say well he's a bit of an antisocial old beggar isn't he that's what that's what he does well meanwhile all the all, all, all the women are doing all the activities in the in in the shared space and and no one's actually thought to break through that culture and actually create connection for the men in those spaces so um and in some ways that's that's kind of a it's kind of a metaphor. It's a microcosm, macrocosm. It's a metaphor for some of the challenges we face more broadly in society, where we have individualized men in their own little units, whatever those units are, but whether it's a care home or whether it's a whether it's an unemployed bloke in, in, in his house or whether it's just a bloke who's in his own kind of like mental room of, of his own, not connected to others. And our challenge, and this is what this series is about, is how do we actually build more social connection um, uh, with with men of all ages and all backgrounds. So that's my going to be my final question to all of our speakers. It's like, what's the secret sauce in terms of thinking about building social connection in men? What's your top tip or your or your top couple of tips for how we build help to build social connection amongst men? Um, obviously, we're focused on older men here, but it can be um, you know across men men generally. And uh, I'll give you a little bit of time to reflect on reflect on that. Uh, uh, and I'll come back to you all in the order of the, uh, the speakers. So that means I'm going to come to Frank first, then Anthony, then Re then Re oh Frank first, then Rebecca, then Anthony, then then Kevin. So 
Frank, your thoughts? What's the uh, what's the secret? What's the secret sauce? How do we build more social connection in blokes? I think you've got to be um, real and and interested, as in you know, you're doing it because you you want to do it. Um, got it. it you know, Aussie blokes pick up falsehood pretty quick, so you've got to be connected uh, um, regularly. Our problem is meeting monthly, so we bring up um, blokes. Uh, and you've just got to be genuine about being interested in their life. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's really insightful, Frank. Real and genuinely interested. Thank you. I think the other thing I'm, I was going to say earlier, um, you've got to retire to something, not from something. Nice. Thank you, Frank. Uh, Rebecca? I really like that phrase, actually, Frank, retire to something. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, the catchphrase of the uh, men's shed movement is shoulder to shoulder for men's well-being and um, uh, I even within my own um, I've, I've, I volunteer myself for a group called Disaster Relief Australia and it's a veteran-led organization and there's a, a lot of a lot of blokes a lot of older blokes um, and a lot of veterans and uh, I found that the the act of volunteering to help the community after natural disaster is the, the act of volunteering is 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 kind of one thing that we've touched on, mm -hmm. but then after we got back and showered and after dinner, the the conversation and the, the 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 bond that happened, and I noticed with the blokes, it was when there wasn't so much eye contact, and it would be while we were sharpening the chainsaws or over a jigsaw puzzle after tea or while we were cooking the barbecue and that's where I noticed that um, a lot of the blokes would start to share some of the more heartfelt whether it's reflection on the person we helped that day or something in their uh, in their military experience um, and men's shed sort of is a bit like that it's that shoulder to shoulder if they're working over a over a table or over an activity then um, they might just uh, I mean, once they've established the networks, they have those friends. But coming into the shed, into the shed to start to find new connections um, over some sort of activities tends to be where I see folks kind of connect. Great, thanks, Rebecca. Anthony, I don't know if you can um, jump in off if you've. Yep, great. Sorry, Glenn. Is that my go? It is, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, yeah. I just it, when you go to unmute it, you have to push buttons on the phone. So sorry about right. that. Um, look, I'm going to be a little bit contentious here. Um, I think we need to be less selfish, um, and I say that in a positive way, not in a negative way. Um, from what what when I talk to the fellows, um, for example, we should be doing stuff for ourselves, things that are selfish. You know, things that we totally enjoy. We waste the day doing them and we enjoy them and we just do them. But I think on the other hand, we've got to do stuff that's, that's not about us. It's about others as well. Um, going out in the community, whatever it is, it's about others. Um, I, I really think that's, in, that's important. Um, and, I, and that's what our guys share as well, as the guys that volunteer and get involved in stuff. It's about doing stuff which is not about themselves. And I think that's where the purpose comes in and the meaning in retirement and spending your days, you know, potentially 30, 40, 40 years doing stuff. We can't be doing stuff that's just about us. Um, it's got to be a balance. And the balance from what we see is doing stuff for others, but also doing stuff for ourselves and doing it quite selfishly. And to add to that, if we do, if we have a partner, do stuff with our partner. So if, if we have a partner, there's three parts. Do stuff for ourselves, do stuff with our partner, but then do start stuff with others as well. Uh, and, and agree with our partners that that's the way, that's the way it is. And, and let them do whatever they want, whenever they want, you know, in terms of being that selfish. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of what I, I think. Brilliant. No, no, really helpful. And, you know, it taps into lots of evidence that we have as well that actually blokes are more likely to get help if they're able to give help in the process. So there's a there's a real value in in, in, in giving help that has lots of layers to it. Lots of layers. Uh, Kevin, can you bring us home, please? Yes. Uh, thank you, Glenn. And I really take on board what Frank said in genuine 
Now, these fellows who are 90 odd that I talk to every week, they can soon tell if I'm telling a few porky pies. But in typical fashion, Australians love to take the mickey out of each other. So we've got to introduce some humour. But I rely a lot on reminiscing and these guys philosophising, I suppose, about their lives. And we tease apart the, uh, the good parts, the bad parts, because basically they want resolution. To a T, these fellas have no significant others or wives left, and they just want to talk amongst each other and share common experiences. I think that's it. They want to share common experiences and draw from it what has been beneficial for them and look at the bad stuff and talk about it and come to accept that. So, yeah, fun acceptance. That's sort of where I'm at with them. Wonderful. Well, uh, massive thanks to Frank, uh, to Rebecca, to Anthony and uh, to, to Kevin. Uh, massive acknowledgements to Shed Happens, to the Men's Sheds Movement, to Circle of Men and to, and, and to Tomnet. Uh, you're all doing extraordinary work. Thanks for everyone who's also joined the, the conversation. Uh, must acknowledge uh, Omni in particular, Older Men, New Ideas, another group which we didn't feature today. And thanks to Bill for uh, representing and to the, for the many other organisations and individuals who are working to improve the lives and health of men and boys across Australia. Uh, thanks for this having this conversation with us about the social connection. 